hey everybody, Craig back at you. Ooh, look at that, a Bentley. That's a sharp car. Yeah, you wanna race? Probably not. Um, anyway, hey everybody, Craig back at you. Out on a beautiful day. Wanna talk a little bit today about the Goldwing Motorcycle Associations and Riding Clubs and basically any type of motorcycle group, riding group that's centered around the Goldwing and kind of what has happened and um, we're all familiar we've all seen a ton of videos now about uh, the demise of the GWRRA uh, Goldwing Road Riders Association um, going out of business as an organization for I'm not sure the exact amount I think it's like 50 years uh, maybe even longer 50 years that they've been in existence first of all let me start by saying I am not a GWRRA member I've never been a GWRRA member but I have been to a few wingdings. So I've been to their sponsor's event, paid my money to get in, so I feel like I have uh, some flexibility in being able to comment on some of the things that they've done. Now, let me preface by saying this. I'm not a GWRA hater. I'm not an organization hater. I am just giving you a perspective from someone who didn't join. One of the things that I think is very important, if your organization went under because of lack of membership, the most important thing to do is go to people who did not want to join and have them tell you why they did not want to join. You're not going to get as big or as a quality of a response from people who are in the organization as to why people don't want to join the organization as opposed to people who refuse to join the organization and getting their reasons. So one of the main reasons I'd heard from uh, members and why people didn't want to join is that the they needed to open up to other brands of motorcycles so they can get younger riders. A young person for touring motorcycle organizations is 40 years old. If you can get them at 40, you've got a young person. Another thing that I read online was that people said, well, the reason the organization didn't do as well is because they didn't have a clear mission statement. Our mission statement needs to be better. Okay. Let me tell you this, no one cares about what your mission statement is. No one cares what it is. Most people don't look up your mission statement. Most people don't, you know, you can come up with a mission statement that talks about, you know, safety and riding and, and, and quality of life, whatever you want to say your mission statement is. You can come up with a mission statement. No one's paying attention to what you say. Which leads me to my overall point is, in organizations, people don't care what you say People look at what you do. And that is why the organization, GWRRA, was doomed to, at some point, close down. Before I get everybody hitting the down, the dislike button on this video, I'm going to say this. Don't, don't hear something that I didn't say. GWRA was a fantastic organization and accomplished much for what it was set out to do in the generational period that it was set out to do it. GWRRA, this organization had a generational lifespan, and that's not a knock. Most organizations have a generational lifespan. Most organizations are not around for 150, 200 years. A good organization will last the generation. It'll last maybe 50, 60, 70 years. If you can get your organization to last that long through a lifespan, you have had a successful organization. The reason why organizations die off is because at some point at the height of their popularity, there needs to be a generational shift. And it's hard for organizations to shift when things are working real well. The problem with that is as thinking things are working well, people are aging and they grow accustomed to what they like. And when they grow accustomed to what they like, they are not open to ideas, new ideas. They like what they like. So let me get back to, it's not what you say, it's what you do, is the reason why people did not join the organization. And what I noticed was that the things that the, the, the different chapters were doing were not of interest to me. Some of the things I've noticed was they play party games, which is okay, I guess, but I'm not, I don't wanna go to a chapter meeting and play charades. That's just not me. Charades is, uh, I'm 50, almost 56 years old, and I'm too young for charades. I'm just, I, I am. That's not something that interests me. 
And another thing that I noticed when I looked through the videos, when I'm looking to join an organization, a writing organization, I want this organization to be apolitical. I don't want to come to a meeting or go to an event and hear about who your preference for this candidate for office is or your signs or your whatever. It's, it's not, I didn't come to a riding organization meeting to turn for it to turn into a rally for a certain political candidate. And that has happened in the GWRA. When I see that, I'm like, ah, I like the organization. I think overall what they, you know, they, they have some positive things, but I'm not joining that organization. Now, again, before you say that, hey, you know, you don't really understand, you know, couple of the year is great. You know, the, the, the games we play during the, the chapter meetings are great. During the district rallies are great. Um, the costume parties and all the other stuff that we do, the, the secret raffles, the basket raffles, all the stuff we do is great. I am not disagreeing with you. I think that's great for those members that have joined the organization and they've been doing this for years. What I'm saying is, for those people that you're looking to bring in, that might not be what they want to do. Sort of reminds me when I was younger, and I would play cards with my friends, and when we get together and we play cards, we play spades. That was our game. We all played spades. We'd have spades parties all night long, and uh, just enjoyed it. Everybody I knew in my age bracket, again, I would say I was probably, from the time I was 16 till now, still play spades. That was our thing, played spades. My parents played pinochle and bridge. I don't know how to play pinochle and bridge. I didn't want to know how to play. My mom tried to teach me, like, you want to learn how to play pinochle? No, that's not my thing. That's your thing. At some point, the pinochle players and the bridge players die out, and nobody plays pinochle and bridge anymore. At some point, I would assume, the spade players are going to die out and no one's gonna play spades anymore. That's, I guess, maybe the best analogy I can do. The Gold Wing, different, the different riding association groups are pinochle bridge players. So pay, play pinochle and play bridge and enjoy it. But unless you switch your game, you're gonna be the last of that group. So now, there's some new organizations that have started up and I don't want to say replace, supplement, or whatever they were for the GWRA, but there's new organizations that have started up. I think one is Eagle Wings, and I've been paying attention to them, and I will say this. If they have an event, I will go. I will support. I'm not against organizations. I will support. I, with my money, I will support. Am I going to join? Not if it's the same Pinochle and Bridge players. Not if they're doing the same things. So do I think the new organizations or the other organizations that concentrate on Goldwing Riders um, are going to survive? Not if they don't change. Not if they don't change. They got a shelf life. And unless they do something different, they'll be good for the, con for the constituents and the members that want to do the things that they do, but you're not going to draw any new members. Finally, another analogy. Remember when the 2018, this gold wing came out? Remember when this came out and everybody freaked out, lost their mind? Oh my God, it's a sports bike, it's a scooter, that's not a real gold wing. It's not, you know, it's the worst thing ever, ever that Honda ever made. Everybody was upset, everybody was pissed off. Honda realized if we don't make a change to the generational gold wing, the gold wing that had been around I don't know, was it 15 years, 17 years with slight modifications? The previous generation GL1800? Even in the name, they had to make a, gen it's a different generation. They need to change. And whether you like the change or you don't like, didn't like the change, I like the change, I bought one. I see a lot of people are buying them now. People are not complaining about them like they used to. People are getting in line to buy them. Whether you like the generational change or you didn't, Honda recognized to keep the gold wing going, we've got to change. And it has to be something that's different, significantly different from what we've done in the past. Gold wing organizations, 
that have been around a long time have to do something significantly different in order for the organization to carry on. So anyway, I hope everybody had a great day. I uh, hope everybody's out riding and enjoying themselves. It's a beautiful day. Gonna head on home, grab some dinner, and enjoy the rest of the evening. So take care, everyone, and God bless.